Good afternoon and thank you all for attending this 21st Complex Coronary Interventions webcast. It is a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Mauro Carlino and Dr. Lorenzo Azzalini from San Raffaele Hospital in Milan in Italy. Uh, both Dr. Carlino and Azzalini have been some of the landmark figures in CTOPCI. Having made uh, seminal techniques, for example, Dr. Carlino has created the technique that bears his name using contrast injection to subintimally um, cross lesions defining proximal ambiguity and cross balloon and crossable lesions. It is a, so it is a great pleasure and honor to have them present today some of the latest developments that have to do with um, the retrograde approach, a specifically technique which they call draft and they will explain in more detail in a minute. Before we start, I would like to thank our sponsors, Terumo and Abbott Vascular, as well as the Dallas VA Research Corporation, who organizes this teleconference. So without further ado, we'll have Dr. Carlino and Dr. Azzalini walk us through the basics of um, retrograde CTO PCI and the new technique they have developed. In clinical practice with a reverse card, and finally, with ways to overcome these problems. So, with the development and implementation of the hybrid algorithm, uh, the retrograde approach has gained uh, a prominent role in modern CTO PCI. In particular, today we're going to talk about the retrograde dissection and reentry techniques. The retrograde approach was first introduced by Japanese operators uh, approximately 10 years ago, back in 2005, but it was not until the development of dedicated microcatheters that the retrograde approach started gaining widespread adoption among operators. Indeed, the Corsair was introduced in 2010, and this data from the European Multicenter CDO Registry actually show an inflection point in the use of the retrograde approach uh, that uh, happened just after the introduction of Corsair. The retrograde approach is currently used in up to 42 CTO PCIs in the multicenter US registry, as you can see in this slide. When we analyze the various crossing strategies used in this registry, we find out that the reverse card is actually the currently uh, most frequently and successfully used retrograde crossing technique in uh, the US. This cartoon nicely shows how reverse card is performed. Briefly, antegrade and retrograde wiring of the occlusion is performed, then a balloon is advanced onto the antegrade uh, wire and inflated in order to create a connection between the space occupied by the antegrade wire and the space occupied by the retrograde wire. And then the retrograde wire is manipulated in such a way that uh, the true lumen is entered and the wire is, is externalized. However, uh, even if reverse card is uh, used in almost half of all CDO PCIs in the United States of America, it still represents the final uh, successful crossing strategy in just 28% of the cases. So uh, why is the retrograde approach so appealing, but at the same time not successful in real-world clinical practice? Today, we're going to discuss with common problems uh, encounter while performing reverse card. There are basically two categories of problems, two categories of issues, those related uh, with wire re-entry into the true lumen and those related with wire externalization. And we will deal with each category and each solution uh, one by one. Let's have a look now at the first category, retrograde wire re-entry into the true lumen. It is of utmost importance that the reverse card be performed with aggressive balloon pre dilatation that is, with a balloon-to-artery ratio of approximately 1, in order to create numerous and large fenestration that allow wire crossing into the true lumen. Another strategy involves the use of IBUS onto the uh, anti-grid wire. This um, IBUS has two aims. First, to choose an adequately sized balloon to perform the dilatation, and second, to understand the spatial relationship between the anti-grade and retrograde wires. Uh, this will help us guiding the retrograde wire re-entry into the true lumen. Uh, however, uh, besides cost-related uh, consideration on the expensiveness of IVUS, uh, this approach is also the drawback that it requires significant operator experience uh, with interpretation of uh, IVUS real-time images to guide wire re-entry. Therefore, at this moment, this technique is mostly used by experienced Japanese operators. Another approach is to use laser over uh, the anti-grid guide wire to enlarge the space created by uh, anti-grid balloon and minimize tissue recoil. 
In this uh, set of slides here, in, in these pictures, uh, a guideliner was inserted onto, uh, into the proximal RCA to assist with the reverse card. Uh, on panel C, you can see the guideliner. And then an anti-grade subintimal dissection plane was created with a coarser, and then a pilot 200 wire was knuckled from proximal to distal cap in preparation for reverse card. However, the balloon could not be advanced uh, over the anti-grade knuckle wire in the subintimal space to complete uh, the reverse card technique. Uh, instead, laser, uh, laser was used to photoblate uh, over the anti-grade wire in the subintimal space. This allowed anti-grade balloon tracking and expansion, as you can see, and a uh, successful guideliner assisted re entry was then performed with an optimal final result in the, in the last uh, picture, uh, picture F. Another option is to perform stent reverse card. This technique consists in creating a permanent and large re entry target for the retrograde wire, uh, implanting a stent onto the integrate wire. In this way, the subintimal space is permanently kept open and is kept open at its maximum extension while retrograde wire re-entry is attempted. <clears throat> this is an example kindly shared by our, by our colleague James Pontis. We can see here that the retrograde wire is having difficulties finding its way to the plane uh, created for the card. So, uh, a stent is implanted on the retrograde wire, keeping uh, the dissection flap wide open, and wire re-entry is then achieved easily. And this is the final result. Okay, let's now deal with solution to problems related to uh, wire externalization. The first solution is uh, guideliner assisted reentry. When wire advancement in proximal true lumen is difficult, despite the concomitant advancement of Corsair, and this can be due uh, to several reasons such as calcification, tortuosity, um, large plaque burden, multiple dissection planes. In these cases, uh, a guideliner can be advanced onto the anterograde wire and uh, literally eat the retrograde wire plus the corsair, thus solving this issue. This approach can be particularly useful when a reverse card is to be performed in the proximal LAD. Uh, in, in these cases, wire manipulation could cause potentially left main injury. But if we insert a guide catheter, catheter extension, such as a guideliner, into the proximal LED, the entry can be achieved safely without injuring the left main bifurcation. And this is a nice example shared with us by our friend Min Bo. As you can see here, uh, re entry into the guideliner, which is placed in the mid RCA, is easily achieved after a few attempts, thus avoiding difficulties related to wire manipulation along the long, very long segment between the base of operation in the mid RCA and the guiding caster. Another option is uh, to perform snaring or the retrograde wire in the aorta. And this can be done with the um, anterograde uh, guiding catheter cannot be directly entered by the retrograde wire. In this case, an end snare was used, and this case again is provided by uh, Kain Minvo. Finally, uh, let's now have a look at the technique that Mauro recently developed uh, to deal with issues with both wire re entry into the true lumen and wire externalization, which is called draft. Mauro, please go ahead. Well, here, what does draft mean? It's an acronym of this uh, maneuver, which means uh, deflate, retract, and advance into fenestration technique. Well, uh, this is uh, our proof of uh, our paper. Will be it, it was accepted uh, two weeks ago, and will be available uh, soon uh, online. Well, in this uh, paper, we describe this technique, this maneuver, uh, which is a versatile approach uh, that allows easy and quick re-entry of the retrograde wire into the true lumen during the reverse car technique. And uh, it can be performed with a variety of different uh, guide wires and, and it's feasible both in the left and the right coronary arteries. But before explaining the, our technique, I want to give you some uh, figurative uh, explanation of this technique. Well, as you can see on this slide, you can see a parachute, an open parachute that you can see very well, two holes uh, on, uh, on it. Well, if I have to engage uh, these uh, two holes with a, uh, with a wire, I, can, I know exactly where I have to move the wire in order to engage uh, uh, this fenestration. But when the parachute is on the ground, 
Where are the uh, previous fenestration? It's very difficult to be, uh, to be found. Well, uh, let me describe the technique step by step. First of all, uh, we need a, a multiple inflation of uh, an adequately uh, sized anti great balloon in order to create uh, num numerous uh, and larger fenestration uh, inside the subintimal space in order to connect the subintimal space with the true lumen. And then the second step is to pull back the deflating balloon and uh, with a simultaneous advancement of the retrograde knuckle wire. Well, it's a very important the timing of this maneuver because basically when we pull back the balloon, we, uh, uh, we pass uh, through a fenestration and uh, before it's collapse, we have to cross uh, this fenestration uh, with the wire. Uh, and uh, taking advantage of the suction forces while the fenestrated dissection flap is wide open, and so again, before it's collapsed. Here, a cartoon uh, explaining better the technique. You can see here, we are in the phase of the reverse carp while the retrograde wire and the integrated wire are both uh, subintimal and uh, in the same space, but in different places of this, uh, the same place. Well, as you know, we advance uh, the anti-grade balloon and we perform uh, several uh, um, inflation of this balloon in order to create a lot, as you can see on this, uh, uh, on this, uh, on this slide, uh, there in uh, the red part, are fenestration created by the, the balloon. You can see the retrograde wire, which is uh, very close to the balloon, then on this, uh, uh, on this slide, you can see that while we pull back the balloon, the uh, knuckle wire follows the balloon while the fenestration is open. And uh, easy can gain the true lumen and, to, and go uh, uh, quite easily, even if the fenestration has uh, collapsed. Well, uh, I, I like to show you a few cases uh, because I think uh, the, they explain uh, better than a lot of words uh, how this technique works. You can see here a, 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 a long uh, right coronary uh, uh, occlusion with a very ambiguous proximal fibrous cap with a rent of uh, three uh, collateral flow from the, uh, from the septal. Well, you can see here on the right, uh, I'm sorry, you can see here on the right, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, crossing uh, uh, with the CN wire of the septal, and uh, easily I reach the distal part of the right, as you can see. Then uh, here, uh, the steel frame showing a knuckle wire uh, on the, uh, the inflated balloon integrated, and this is the crucial part of the draft, uh, as you can see, while uh, one operator the, the pull back the balloon, we can see how easily the, uh, the uh, knuckle wire engage the, uh, the, uh, the guiding cap. Uh, well, well it's very, this is a, a very uh, important part of, the, uh, of this technique uh, because uh, it, to, uh, for, for a successful uh, maneuver, I think it's better the, mm, two operators are needed uh, to perform this technique. One is advancing the retrograde guide wire, whereas the other is deflating and withdrawing the integrated balloon. Uh, and uh, in this way, you can reach uh, quite easily the, uh, the guiding. Here, the, the, final, uh, the final result. Another case is this on the LAD, just to show you that this maneuver could be performed uh, both on the left system and on the right system. You can see here there are a, a LAD occluded, the mammary was occluded, and I cross through an open graph for the, uh, for the diagonal, and I reach quite easy the, the, the distal cap of the occlusion. Then, as you can see here on the uh, steel frame, you can see the knuckle wire on the anti-grade balloon inflated. And uh, on the next uh, movie, you see here, I, de I de deflate the balloon, I pull back the balloon, and here you can see uh, it was very difficult to advance the, uh, the knuckle wire. And uh, basically, I show you again 
uh, you see I knuckled also the uh, the Corsair and probably this maintain open the flap and the, the wire even with this uh, uh, with this uh, shape uh, easily engage uh, the uh, the the guiding and as you can see this is on the right uh, this is the final result I want to show you other other case. Case, other, uh, uh, other few few cases let's see here uh, you you see uh, here the deflating ballooning uh, entering in the guiding and uh, this uh, knuckle wire uh, engage uh, even with the not radio pack part of the wire and with a large loop uh, the, uh, the, the guiding uh, just because I engage uh, the fenestration in a correct, uh, in a, with a correct timing while it was uh, significant, uh, significantly over it. Now I show you another case. Look at Again, I retract the balloon, another operator advanced the wire, and look at, basically, it jump inside the, the, the guide, and even with the knuckle. So the knuckle is not important to, to, to the, uh, for the successful of this maneuver, but uh, just to explain that even with the knuckle, I'm able to engage the, uh, the, uh, the guiding, uh, just because uh, I pass uh, through the fenestration in a correct uh, moment. Look at this uh, last uh, example, which is very, very inter interesting. You can see here, basically, it jumped inside the, uh, the guy. Let's go back to the other one. Mauro, can, can I ask, uh, there are some questions that have come up. One question is, is there any particular wire that you use for forming your knuckle is it just a st any standard wire or any preference for using a retrograde wire? No, I usually use the wire that uh, I use for the for crossing the the uh, collateral circulation. There is no a preferential wire. Probably a polymer jacket wire such as a uh, Fielder family wire uh, could work uh, better. But uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't think. Uh, uh, you need a, a wire, a particular wire, for the success of this uh, this technique. Probably my suggestion is use it uh, not uh, aggressive wire such as uh, uh, Gaia or uh, Confianza because it doesn't need. Basically, if you have to cross uh, the uh, the fenestration, you can cross uh, even with the uh, workers wire. So I don't think it's a matter of uh, uh, of a family wire, but uh, uh, the of the mm, method, uh, of, uh, uh, a good application of this technique. Perfect. And then one more question. It has to do with the system. You just showed us a nice case of retrograde LED opening. And as Lorenzo mentioned before, there's always that concern of injuring the circumflex when you go retrograde from... Um, into the, from the LED to the left main. Uh, do, uh, you, do you still routinely use this technique for LED CTOs, for example, or use a guy liner for those? Or how do you just minimize the risk for injuring the left main and or the circumflex when you do the CTOs in the LED? Well, I think for for, uh, for safeness, it's better to use a guy liner if the uh, occlusion of the LED is very proximal in order not to create uh, any any problem at the bifurcation of the circuit and the LED of the distal trunk, the uh, left main. So uh, I suggest to use uh, this technique uh, with the gut liner uh, if, the, uh, if the, the occlusion of the LED is very proximal. But uh, as you can see, uh, if you perform uh, this uh, procedure in a correct way, I think uh, mm, the uh, I, I think that you can perform quite safely even uh, without uh, the help of the uh, guideliner, for example. Perfect. Well, uh, there are uh, other um, uh, other suggestions. We we have to do it about our technique here, for example. Of course, if you want to have a successful of this procedure, you have to uh, you have to have a good alignment of the guiding catheter uh, with the course of the occluded vessel. And, and my suggestion is, while you perform the reverse cut, such as you can see in uh, in this movie, uh, you inflate the balloon in order to 
to fix uh, all the system and then you move the guidance in order to be well aligned with the uh, with the vessel course can you see uh, manos yeah that's very nice you're essentially inflating the balloon anchoring the guide and then you're clocking the guide and it's turning nicely and you're becoming coaxial i see later on in the film another so if you're not sometime with the amplat left is not so easy to to perform this maneuver and uh, in this case uh, i prefer to change the uh, the guiding in order to put a guiding that uh, better uh, can put, uh, must be uh, inserted uh, located in the uh, in the occluded artery in a correct way here other uh, other uh, other discussion about uh, the draft. Uh, my suggestion is to perform uh, several predilatation with an adequately sized balloon. I suggest to have, uh, as uh, the major, the majority of operator do, a balloon to artery ratio close to one, and uh, um, you should uh, keep close proximity of the retrograde wire and the distal end of the retracting and the great balloon in order to engage the fenestration created a balloon in a better way. And uh, uh, as I as discussed before, drafts can be combined with or bailout by other techniques. For example, draft plus a guideline facilitator reverse cart if the proximal cap is located very distal, distally from the native coronary arteriosteum, or if you want to have a re-entry uh, not close to the distal part of the left main. I, as I discussed before. Well, in conclusion, uh, I think that uh, the retrograde approach now is very uh, is used very frequently. More than 40% of uh, uh, CTO in the USA, as you underline uh, in uh, in few papers right, uh, you wrote. However, success rate uh, can be improved. Uh, reverse cut is currently the approach of choice, uh, but uh, it can often be challenging. The knowledge of reverse cut centric can improve success rates. And draft is a novel, inexpensive, easy to perform, an efficient technique that is integrated with the CTO PCI operator tool. If you have any question, uh, we are lucky to try to reply. Perfect. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you very much for an excellent presentation here. Here are some of the things that come through. One question is regarding the contemporary reverse card. As you're familiar, some people are advocating now to use less, um, I mean, smaller size balloons for the reverse card, which, to be honest, I haven't had much luck with. And I saw you're also recommended to use large one to one size balloons. Um, what are your thoughts about contemporary reverse card versus draft, or what, what do you think gives the best chance for success? Well, I fully agree with you. So, to, uh, there is no reason to be uh, to be reductive in choosing uh, the, uh, the size of the balloon for the reverse cast. Uh, if you have any uh, any problem, I think it's better to perform an IVUS uh, in order to be sure not to overestimate the balloon. But I think uh, that uh, there is no concern uh, about uh, aggressive dilatation because uh, uh, if not, uh, you you spend a lot of time in order to re-enter and frequently if you are not dilated aggressively you are not able to uh, the wire. And, and another question that is uh, bringing up some people especially when they do the ipsilateral epicardials they like to do the tipping or the rendezvous where they essentially uh, advance an undergrid wire instead of externalizing the wire just your thoughts on what's your preference regarding doing the TP in versus externalizing and getting the support of the rail and the long guide wire? I think that the TP is a very uh, a very uh, nice procedure, but um, not easy to be performed. I think that if the operator takes confidence with the draft technique, uh, there is uh, no need to do the TP in, or better, you can do it inside the, the guiding. 
And uh, well, uh, uh, probably this technique is very useful when you have not available a good uh, wire such as the RG3 for uh, externalization, and so you can uh, uh, you can jump this uh, step of the uh, reverse cut. But uh, you know, I think is a uh, is a matter of uh, of uh, of uses. Uh, if you are used to do it in a way, well. Uh, Continuing this way, it's uh, up to the preference of uh, operator. I think it's a very personal, uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a personal choice. I think. What do you think, Manus? Sure. No, I, I completely agree with you. Um, I know some people say that tipping can be done very easily. I must say I haven't been that lucky. Sometimes I've tried and it just took forever and end up externalizing anyway. So I think if it works easy, as you say, it's fine. But if it doesn't it's probably faster and more efficient to do the externalization. And I must say, I do like the, the freedom you have when you externalize, because you can lose your wire, you have great support. It's just, I think, a very, you know, gives a lot of support, especially through septals. Now, picardials, very small and tortuous vessel, I can see the problem there. If you get too much of attention on the heart, you might injure the collateral. But otherwise, I do prefer the externalization, just as you said, uh, Mauro. Uh, uh, I would like to make a couple of observations also uh, from my part. So th the first time Mauro explained this technique to me, it looked very, very easy. And then when I, I actually tried it myself, it just really worked the first time I tried it. So it's a, a draft is a very simple, very easy to perform technique. But the uh, second point is that this is just another tool uh, in the PCI, uh, CTO PCI operators toolkit. So we're not performing draft all the, all the time. So it's just uh, another tool we have that uh, can add to our uh, operator um, admarmentarium. So, uh, you know, having many uh, different solutions to problems we can uh, encounter in clinical practice can help us uh, getting the PCI done successfully. So this is very important to me. So Manos, I'm very happy that you give us the opportunity because I, I was able to explain how easy is this technique. The important to respect the timing of this technique. But uh, as I, uh, I showed in uh, the cases uh, we performed, which are consecutive cases, uh, uh, well, it's very easy to be understand. Uh, even the figurative uh, explanation I do, uh, I did, uh, it's very useful to understand uh, the mechanism of this technique and so how you have to do it uh, in order to, to be successful with this technique. So one more question is regarding the guide uh, catheter size. Any, uh, I, I, you still use eight friends for this to make it easier. Is there any particular preference you have in terms of guide catheter size? It depends on your setup. You know, usually uh, I use a seven, uh, seven French uh, in order to reduce uh, with the integrated great injection uh, the amount of contrast. Uh, but of course, if you use uh, eight Frenches, uh, you, there is no problem. But I think it's not a matter of uh, a French, uh, French of the guiding, but uh, uh, the correct step-by-step, uh, step-by-step uh, uh, um, step uh, uh, procedure. Uh, I mean, if you are well aligned with the, uh, with the artery, if you perform in a correct time in this maneuver, I think that uh, having the seven French or eight French guiding candidates doesn't matter. Sure. And then do you ever use IVUS for this to, to guide this or you, it's completely IVUS independent using the draft? There is no, no reason to perform the IVUS if you have to perform IVUS for other reasons. Not, uh, uh, for the success of the of this procedure, because uh, you know uh, uh, it's very difficult uh, performing IVUS at the same time I create a fenestration and at the same time I have to cross this fenestration. So it's just a uh, visualize all the I have uh, all the uh, all the information in order to get uh, the wire inside the the guiding. Perfect. Perfect. That's uh, that's very useful. And then, and then, how often do you have? Like people are debating how often you need to reverse card versus um, go to the true retrograde to do true lumen undergrade. Just in your experience, how often do you get to uh, do uh, true by yourself, and how often do you have to do other things to to go retrograde? 
Um, more or less, I think in 20, 25%, I reach a true to true lumen. And the other, in other case, I perform, uh, in the majority of cases, the reverse cast. Uh, this, is my, uh, this is my experience. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I think, you know, this was extremely useful. I think for people, especially those who are, you know, now early or in the middle phase of doing the retrograde, as uh, Lorenzo said very, very eloquently, this is, you have to have multiple tools because sometimes one thing will work, sometimes things won't work. And I think uh, the draft technique that Mauro and Lorenzo put together, I think this is a great technique. I love that you were able to present today because in the U.S. I don't think it's really well known quite yet. So hopefully after today they can reach a little more people and this way be able to be used more often when people get in trouble with um, reverse card and externalization. So really very really grateful that you took the time to um, present this um, uh, this technique and help us and help the, uh, the interventionist here with this procedure. I'm very I'm very happy with your words because I'm very I'm sure that uh, if you appreciate uh, this technique, I'm sure that you'll be able to be a mentor of this technique in <laughs> USA <laughs> because I think uh, as you, as we said, it's a safe, uh, inexpensive, uh, and uh, quite easy to be. The learning curve is basically absent yeah. because uh, uh, my friend Lorenzo, when arrived in Milan and started performing uh, uh, this uh, technique, uh, performed by itself uh, with no problem. So uh, I think uh, this experience could be transmitted to other uh, CTO operator, and uh, I hope uh, uh, can have a success in the future in order to reduce uh, the time of this uh, procedure, which are uh, very, very attractive, but sometimes are very uh, time consuming. Absolutely. So uh, I'm just going to ask anyone else on the, on the line, if anyone else has any questions regarding uh, for Dr. Carlino and uh, Dr. Azzalini. And, and if not, I'm going to thank you again uh, very much. I know it's very late over there and you haven't had dinner yet, so hope you have <laughs> a wonderful dinner and we're really thankful for all the great information you provided us. Also, would like to thank Dallas Vienzers Corporation, who together with Terumo and, and, and Abbott Vascular have sponsored this event. So thank you again all. Uh, thank you, Mauro and Lorenzo, and thank you all for being on this webcast and hope to see you in our next one next month. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.